Hey everyone, Ryan here. Uh, today's video is yield farming explained in an easy, uh, simple to understand fashion uh, with some real world examples that you can go and use in the market today. Now, yield farming is one of the most popular strategies that people use if they want to generate uh, passive income and cash flow from their crypto portfolios. Um, passive income and yield generation is something I'm going to be covering a lot of on this channel. So if you're interested in those topics, make sure you subscribe, um, hit the uh, like button on this video. And if you have any questions about yield farming after watching this, just go down to the comment section. So first of all, what is yield farming? Now, uh, to me, yield farming is the process of finding the best risk adjusted returns on a pool of crypto assets. So, for example, if you have a certain amount of Ethereum, a certain amount of, um, you know, some kind of stable coin, a dollar coin or whichever other coins you're trying to earn yield on, you might be looking around um, in the DeFi marketplaces to find um, opportunities where you can generate uh, yield passive income on those funds in a way that is also uh, relatively low risk or at least there's a good balance between the risk and reward. And we're gonna have a look at some examples of that um, later in this video. Now, you can think of, um, if you think in the real world of like looking around for you know, the best interest rate on a, a savings account with banks or different investment opportunities that have the best yield that's gonna pay you the most per month or year, if you're looking for passive income investments, things like that. Um, this is kind of the equivalent with um, in the crypto markets but it does get more complex. Um, the risks are higher, but the potential rewards are higher as well. Um, with yield farming strategies, you can often earn you know, 30, 50, 100% or more on your money each year. Um, and that can go up as high as 200% or even more if you wanna get into higher risker strategies and um, you know, more complex farming and, and things like that. So we're gonna have a look at some examples of how that works right now. Now, there are a lot of different types of yield farming and a lot of different strategies that you can employ to earn yield in crypto. But two of the most common are going to be liquidity providing and liquidity mining, which are very, very similar and related strategies. And we're going to go through how they work. Now, if you're getting started with yield farming, this is likely where you're going to start. And even if you're more advanced and you know moving around a lot of money and trying to earn yield on very, very large sums, liquidity providing and liquidity mining um, are still very likely to be a lot of, of what you're doing. So we're gonna talk about liquidity providing first and how it works. So here, the graphic on, on the screen, um, this represents a decentralized exchange, such as something like Uniswap, which is the logo on the top right here, or, or SushiSwap, um, also known as an AMM or automated market maker. And what these exchanges are is they're large pools of crypto assets um, that contain assets owned by all kinds of different individuals. So here we've got a million dollars worth of um, USDC, which is a stable coin, and Ethereum. And you know this two million total might, cut, might make up one large pool, and there could be hundreds of thousands of people that all have their money um, in that pool together to make up the total amount. Now, if somebody wants to come and buy um, Ethereum for USDC, they can come to this pool and they can swap one for the other. OK, so how does this tie into to yield farming? Now, if I am a yield farmer, um, I can do something that is called providing liquidity to this pool. So I might put in, you know, a thousand dollars worth of USDC and a thousand dollars worth of Ethereum into this pool. So I put in two thousand dollars total. And that is providing liquidity for people that want to come into this pool, come into Uniswap, come into SushiSwap and swap one um, coin or token for the other. OK, now, when somebody comes in and makes a trade like that, they are going to be paying a small fee. OK, they might be paying 0.2, 0.3 percent. Um, the amount varies and a portion of that fee is distributed to everybody that is adding liquidity into the pool. So if you have some of your USDC or some of your Ethereum in this pool, and I have some of mine in this pool too, we will both get a small percentage of the fees generated by anybody coming into Uniswap or SushiSwap to trade and swap one of these coins for the other. Okay, so that is the most basic form of um, yield farming where you're providing liquidity and you're taking a percentage of the fees for all of the trades that are made in these pools on these exchanges. Now, liquidity mining is something that is 
basically a slightly more advanced version of that. So let's say this represents a sushi swap pool, and you know sushi swap wants to incentivize people to put a lot of their liquidity into this pool to put more money into this pool. So as well as um, sharing the swap fees with everybody that adds liquidity to this pool, they might. Uh, create another incentive, which is to give people um, who are providing liquidity additional tokens. And they do actually do this, which we'll look at in a minute. So if I provide um, liquidity to this pool on the USDC side and on the ETH side, I will get not only a percentage of the swap fees, but I might get a certain amount of sushi tokens um, that are distributed every day or every week to everybody that contributes to, to this pool, okay? So for example, I might be earning 10, 20, 30% APY per year from the swap fees, swap fees if it's you know a high volume pool. And also Sushi might be adding in some extra liquidity in forms of, um, some extra rewards, sorry, in the form of Sushi tokens. And that might add an extra 20, 30, 40% um, to my rewards. So, you know, over the course of the year, I might earn 40, 50% between the swap fees and liquidity mining bonuses, which are sushi swap um, incentivizing me by giving me sushi tokens for providing liquidity to the pool. So those are the two basic forms of yield farming. And now we're going to have a look at how they work in the real world with some examples. Okay, so here we are on the sushi swap homepage, which is sushi.com. And this is one of the larger decentralized exchanges and somewhere you can go to quite easily implement some of these, um, you know, simpler uh, basic yield farming strategies. And we'll be able to look at both liquidity providing um, and liquidity mining on this platform. And then after we're going to look at a different platform that will um, give you similar opportunities, but with higher rewards. So on Sushi, we click on um, enter app. We would go to farms, we would go on all farms. And I actually want to look for a pool that has phantom in it, which is a coin I am pretty interested in at the moment. And you can see straight away, we can find a pool for uh, phantom and Ethereum. This is wrapped Ethereum, okay? So if we were to enter this pool, provide you know 50% phantom, 50% Ethereum, let's say $1,000 um, of each for 2000 total, we would earn roughly 9% um, per year in rewards, um, completely passive income, okay? And you can see that this is one of those incentivized um, liquidity mining pools that we uh, mentioned just now, where we're gonna get additional rewards uh, paid in Sushi. So if you see the, the little bubble on the right-hand side, um, we've got two different um, rewards that are specified here. The uh, fee APR, which is just over 5%, that is what we'll earn from trading fees. So from people coming into the pools and swapping one asset for the other, we'll earn uh, just over 5% from that. Then we'll earn an additional 4% um, from the Sushi tokens that are being given to us by the Sushi platform um, as a thank you for um, adding our liquidity into the pool. Um, that is called liquidity mining, and that is just an extra incentive. So. All told, it gives us just over 9%, okay? So not terrible, um, not great, but there are definitely better opportunities out there um, that might carry a bit more risk, but can give us more rewards. So we wanna have a look for those. So now I'm gonna hop over to the um, Liquid Driver platform, okay? So this is Liquid Driver uh, homepage. It's on the Phantom blockchain. Um, it is a platform that can be used for providing liquidity and liquidity mining. And we are gonna show you the, um, the same pool, which is gonna be half Ethereum, um, half Phantom, and we're gonna show you the increased rewards that you can get um, on this platform if you were to take the time and look around. So here is the same pool that we just looked at at Sushi, okay? It's wrapped Ethereum and Phantom, 50-50, half of each. And you can see that the APR in this pool, instead of 9%, which we're getting on Sushi, is actually 49% on Liquid Driver, okay? So that's almost five times. You might think, well, why is that? Well, here we have the reward breakdown. And you can see the trading fee APR. So we would get about 8% a year from trading fees. So it was 5% on Sushi. It would be 8% on Liquid Driver. Um, and that is just the fees that people pay from swapping between Phantom and Ethereum. But the big difference is in the additional rewards, the liquidity 
liquidity mining rewards that we are paid from the liquid driver platform that are there to incentivize us to provide liquidity here rather than somewhere else. Okay. So the APR in, um, LQDR, which is the liquid driver token, is a massive 41%. So we're getting 41% APR in liquidity mining alone. Okay. So that totals up to almost 50% per year. Um, obviously a big difference between the 9% and the 49% that we are, um, you know, between sushi and, and liquid driver. So I said at the start of the video, yield farming is about finding risk adjusted returns. Now, most people would assume that sushi swap is safer than liquid driver. There's less risk because it's more well known and it's been around for longer. Okay. Liquid driver is a newer platform. It's slightly, you know, less well known. It has less of a track record. So generally people are going to consider, consider this to be slightly um, higher risk to, to use and to deposit your funds into. Okay. It's obviously up to you to determine that for, for yourselves, but you've got 9% on sushi, which is considered safer but you've got almost 50% on liquid driver, which might be a little bit more higher risk. So again, it's about balancing um, between risk and reward and deciding what you're comfortable with. But it's clear here, we have two pools that are exactly the same, um, but on one, you earn almost five times rewards. And this is what yield farming is all about. It's about finding these opportunities and deciding which one is worth going for when you've looked at the, the risks and rewards and, and things like that. So mentioned risk a few times. Now we need to take um, a very quick minute to just discover um, what actually are the risks with yield farming and providing liquidity like we've been going over in this video. Okay, now anytime you're doing anything in DeFi, you need to be aware of what the potential risks are and yield farming is definitely no different. Okay, now bear in mind with the examples we've gone over today, um, where we're using pools with assets like Ethereum, Phantom, um, USDC, we've already negated one of the biggest risks, which is if you're yield farming and trying to get super, super high APYs, APRs, such as 500, 1,000% a year, but it's on tokens that have been around for a month or six weeks, and you don't know if they're going to last, that is a huge risk. That could easily go to zero. So we haven't covered that in this video. We've already negated those big risks by just focusing on established tokens, which are Phantom and Ethereum, which most people consider to be long-term plays, okay? So in that sense, we've covered low risk, but there are still risks we need to be aware of. The first one is impermanent loss. Now, this is something you should make sure you understand before you do any kind of yield farming. Um, in the, the simplest terms, impermanent loss means that if you have two assets in a pool and one of them stays relatively static and one of them sees a huge price increase and goes up three, four, five, ten 10x, you could be in a position where you would have been better off holding the two assets separately and not in a pool. Um, and that the APR from that you get from the pool, whether it's 30, 40, 50 percent, um, is not enough to cover the difference in, in those price changes. That is a separate video, which I'll be releasing. Um, but impermanent loss is something that is somewhat complex, but you need to understand before you get into yield farming. OK, second is hacks or smart contract issues. Now, this kind of comes back to um, just now where I was saying that most people consider sushi to be safer than something like liquid driver. Why? Because sushi has been around for longer, so it's more bulletproof. Um, it's kind of stood the test of time more. Any of these um, platforms can be hacked. They can be exploited. There could be issues with the smart contracts, which is what controls all of this behind the scenes. So that is always a risk. The newer a platform is, the less money that is secured in there. Um, the less track record it has, the higher um, the risk is of some kind of hack or exploit or, or whatever. So DeFi is full of hacks and exploits. So you must consider that and you must know that that is a possibility and only play with money that you are you know, aware of the possibility that it could be lost in, in some kind of exploit. And then third is specific to stable coins. So in the first example, we had a pool that was half USDC, which is a dollar peg coin and half 
have Ethereum. You know, there are certain risks that come with stable coins. Okay. So there is a lot of regulation talking about cracking down on, on certain stable coins. Okay. There's also something called de-pegging, which means if a, a stable coin is supposed to be worth one US dollar, um, with the mechanics of how some of them work, it is technically possible for that value to fluctuate. So, you could have a coin that's worth a dollar and then, you know, something crazy happens in the market and now it's worth 60 cents or something that is rare, but it could happen in, you know, times of extreme volatility and, and things like that. So these are all risks that you need to look into and be aware of when you're getting into yield farming. Okay. So if you like this video, um, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the like button. Um, if you have any uh, questions, go down to the comments section below. Be adding a lot more DeFi content, including some more advanced yield farming strategies that go well beyond what's in this video. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.